When the original PlayStation was released in stores, the opportunity to test out the somewhat budding genre of 3D fighting games started with a pair of games, Battle Arena Toshinden and Tekken. Both were highly entertaining forays in the mostly unique world for a gamer like yours truly, who had gone out of his way to play the best of the best and the worst of the worst fighting games available. Tekken 2 truly made me a fan of the franchise, but it wasn't until Tekken 3 did I truly start investing my time in learning how to play the game closer to Virtual Fighter than Street Fighter. Tekken 4 felt like a step back, while Tekken 5 proved to be a return to form while setting the foundation for some of the offline features seen in the franchise's future iterations. Skipping Tekken 6 and only partially playing Tekken Tag Tournament 2, my fandom for the series had really waned. After two years of testing it out in arcades amongst some of the best gamers on the Eastern Hemisphere, Tekken 7 finally got its console release, making it one of the few 3D fighters to drop on 8th generation consoles. With mixed reviews starting to pour out in regards to everything but the actual fighting, I came into my first Tekken game in 5 years optimistic that the gameplay wouldn't let me down, but wondering whether or not it could keep me invested as much as Tekken 5 did over a decade ago. Considering the time-consuming nature of Tekken Tag Tournament 2's achievement trophy list, I came into Tekken 7 with no real intentions of completing the franchise's latest iteration. But Tekken 7 actually features a ridiculously easy achievement trophy list that has requirements such as winning one ranked online match and finishing the game's story mode. Even some of the more difficult achievements like winning the special matches against Akuma can be attained after a few attempts. Barely 15 hours of unfocused effort pass before I buckle down and produce 50,000 points worth of damage to the AI in practice mode to gain the trophy associated with my action and the subsequent platinum trophy. The mines at Namco, now Bandai Namco, did an excellent job over 20 years ago in creating a foundation for a fighting game that hasn't needed many alterations, just improvements in regards to the character balancing and ensuring almost anyone can pick up and play the game without much practice while giving a gamer the incentive to improve with their character of choice. Rather than sticking with the prototypical light or strong strikes, Tekken maps the strike buttons to each limb, such as the square or X button corresponding to a left punch. Specific strike buttons pressed together can create combo opportunities, the ability to throw a nearby opponent, and even switch stances with the intent of unleashing a powered attack. Movement is essential in Tekken, courtesy of full directional movement including sidestepping. By pushing the directional pad or analog stick in different directions while tapping the strike buttons allows characters to pull off various maneuvers from simple jabs and front kicks to sick grapples and opponent launching uppercuts that once again can be turned into combos that could end a fight incredibly fast if someone isn't careful. Every character, including the 10 new fighters with a pair both connected to their namesakes having styles similar to the previous characters seen throughout the series, has similar base abilities when it comes to striking, but everything else is incredibly different due to a mixture of in-depth move combo lists based on various fighting styles both real and fictionalized, physical attributes, and in the case of someone like guest star Akuma, even projectiles that, while powerful, can easily be sidestepped. There are major additions to the gameplay options in Tekken 7, specifically Rage Mode. When a fighter is down to about 30% health, that character will start flashing red alongside the health bar. With the tap of the right bumper or R1 button, the player of this hurt character can pull off a Rage Art attack. An impressive looking series of strikes that can cut down a lot of the winning opponent's health if it connects. Alongside Rage Art is Rage Drive. By hitting a specific button sequence while in Rage Mode, the player can land in an attack that can turn into a lengthy combo if the player is properly prepared rather than just being a one-hit sequence like Rage Art attacks. 
Thankfully, rage art and rage drive attacks can easily be blocked by the patient and aware, leaving the failed fighter open to punishment that will most likely end the fight in favor of the defensive player. Rage mode is really an unnecessary addition, but is implemented in an intelligent fashion that doesn't hinder the overall experience during the various fights. There are also power crush attacks that allows a player to absorb strikes before dishing out a devastating counter strike, and screw attack maneuvers, replacing the bound system from the last two games that can leave a struck opponent spinning into the air for one of those lengthy airborne combos. Beyond the actual gameplay are the various modes, including the much to do about practically nothing in the main story mode, the Mishima Saga. What initially appeared to be a retelling of the entire Heihachi Kazuya Mishima feud that has become the lore's backbone is nothing but a lackluster continuation of the events seen in Tekken 6's story, topped off by a bit of fighting between the father and son pair, as well as flashbacks to lazily explain the origins of the infamous Devil Gene. While the cutscenes are nice to look at, it really isn't until the last 20 minutes or so of a two and a half to three hour mode before the Mishima Saga reaches its stride and feels satisfying. Add that to the fact very few characters are given a spotlight in the main story mode, with those individuals relegated to the one fight story missions known as character episodes that provide the typical character endings usually seen when playing through Tekken's arcade mode a mode that is provided in this game, but for some reason isn't attached to the character endings as per the norm. Arcade mode was usually a great way to learn new characters in a short period of time while completing the game in the process, but not this time around. The real bread and butter of offline play is treasure battle. By picking a specific character, the player can do battle with numerous fighters decked out in the various outfits one will gain while playing the mode that can be equipped to make every fight mostly look unique. This character customization option is lackluster too. A majority of the human characters have the same clothing options with only a few getting the special item treatment, like longtime favorites such as King and Heihachi. It's the oddball characters players can really deck out, including Yoshimitsu. Unlike Injustice 2, the costume adjustments are mostly for cosmetic purposes only and have no bearing on the actual gameplay other than a few slow projectiles like a pizza pan that the player can throw in the heat of battle. With each fight won in Tekken 7 comes the awarding of coins that can be used to purchase clothing items and most interestingly, almost all of the full motion videos, cutscenes, and artwork from all the Tekken games courtesy of the gallery mode. There's also a jukebox mode featuring all the music from the Tekken games, making both additions big pluses, but don't improve or degrade the games' overall quality for people who just want to fight. More than likely, just fighting for Tekken players is dedicated to the quality of its online functionality. Sadly, Tekken 7 Online is an inconsistent experience. Though not as bad now as it was immediately following the game's release, thanks to a couple of updates and patches, Tekken 7 is still rough around the edges. The way to get a game started in the three online modes, ranked, player, and tournament, can range from anywhere between a couple of minutes to 10 minutes if the game fails to connect after the players both accept the fight. This is made even worse by the game's long loading times, a problem both offline and online. And there's no guarantee, even if you get into a game, it will stay stable long enough for the players to determine who is the best. But when all the stars align and the connectivity issues and qualities are up to par, Tekken 7 Online is a blast to play, even if you're getting beaten down by someone that is much more experienced than you. And you can even have a rematch with any player courtesy of the revenge match option if you lose as long as they accept. Thanks to a lack of offline modes to really keep a player coming back for more, Tekken 7 is going to live and die on the quality of its online functionality. Hopefully Bandai Namco continues to improve upon the foundation it already has set in place that allows gamers to come together and have some incredible fun fights from around the globe by getting their online functionality to work as flawlessly as its contemporaries like Injustice 2.
The basis of Tekken's gameplay is just as strong as ever with Tekken 7. It does just enough to remind gamers 3D fighters can still be done in a fantastic manner without going out of its way to revolutionize the genre like it did three times over two gaming generations. Unfortunately, Tekken 7 suffers from various problems outside of the actual fighting, thanks to the lacking modes both offline and online, online functionality being hit and miss, and the character customization not being as robust as it could have been considering the variety of characters involved in this iteration. While it won't be heralded as the standard of all 3D fighters, or even the standard of all Tekken games, Tekken 7 still ranks high compared to its predecessors on the strength of its gameplay alone. Tekken 7 is such a mixed bag, it's almost unbelievable that this is what came from 2 plus years of testing, hard work, and apparent planning. From a gameplay perspective, this is still the same old great Tekken, with a few additions and subtractions that actually makes this iteration feel closer to a step forward thanks to proper character balancing and blocking windows for the new gameplay additions like Rage Mode. Beyond the gameplay is where things get rough. Online is finicky at best, no matter what the connection quality is. The offline modes are both disappointing, such as story mode and the handling of character endings, and highly entertaining while lacking as well, like treasure battle and local versus mode. The other fluffy stuff, such as aesthetic customization and gallery modes' qualities will vary from player to player, but really don't add much to the overall value of the game. If you only care about what happens from round to round, Tekken 7 truly delivers offline and mostly online. If simply seeing who is the king of Iron Fist isn't enough to keep you interested, Tekken 7 might be something you want to wait and pick up in a few months or during a sale. Or maybe go with NetherRealm Studios' games such as the recently released Injustice 2 or Mortal Kombat XL. There are also high quality 2D fighters, specifically on the PlayStation 4, such as Street Fighter 5 and the King of Fighters 14, that might tickle your fancy more than Tekken 7. Me diz onde está o Kazuya. Tá brincando comigo? Hum? Pega, pega, pica. 